I'd like to call upon uh, Mr. J.T. Johnson uh, from uh, Sandia National Laboratory. Um, Jay and I worked uh, quite extensively in past. Um, in my previous role before I joined Electric Power Research Institute, I was at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, which is also a DOE national lab, just like Sandia is. So uh, uh, welcome, uh, Jay. I'd like to hear your perspective. And good morning, everyone. Uh, today I would like to talk about uh, smart grid actualization using advanced inverter functionality. And I think I'm, I'm here to sell you on an idea of, of changing the regulations in India to add these advanced inverter functions because I think that it can solve a lot of the challenges that we've heard from our previous panelists about. And so uh, kind of in the context of, of what we've been discussing here, I'd like to say that, you know, India is pushing this 100 gigawatts concept and, and because of the prices dropping for PV inverters and PV systems in general, uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of this growth take off. The problem is as you add additional penetrations of renewables, you run into these challenges, uh, whether it be voltage issues on the distribution system, transmission level problems, uh, you, can, you can run into a number of protection issues uh, potentially. And so what we would like to do is uh, convert these inverters from, from, for lack of a better term, dumb inverters to these smart inverters. And so you can see one of these smart inverters in the upper right here. You can tell because he has glasses. He's very intelligent. Um, and so, so each of these inverters have the capability of providing support for uh, the voltage and frequency uh, riding through different grid disturbances through these protection mechanisms, and they interact with the, with the grid operators through communications. And so you can kind of bundle these different capabilities, and they've been categorized in a number of different ways, into three different areas, which I will call voltage support, frequency support, and protection capabilities. And so each of these functions that, that can be easily implemented in PV inverters and have been in Europe and the United States now, uh, are, are the building blocks for a, a smart grid system. And so they, they have interoperable uh, capabilities for, uh, and these, these can work for solar, energy storage, fuel cells, other DER assets, even electric vehicles, uh, to provide efficient, optimized power to the system in high penetration uh, situations. And so a lot of my research over the last uh, decade or so and the work in the national laboratories and EPRI and other uh, universities has been to come up with uh, so using these, these components, these building blocks, solutions to these power system problems. And so I present to you here just a, a couple of these, uh, these uh, uh, different uh, control modes to provide different uh, grid support capabilities. Uh, so you can do uh, distribution level uh, voltage regulation, uh, hosting capacity increases, meaning you can add the ability to, to integrate more renewables without exceeding your voltage limits. Uh, there's wide area damping or small s signal stability capabilities, uh, frequency control or ancillary services using the frequency watt function, and you can also do protection support with curtailment or other uh, ride throughs. And so I would like to present to you uh, two parallel timelines here. The, the top one is what's happened in the United States and is, and, and is currently happening. And the lower one is what I would propose India consider, uh, leveraging some of the work that's gone on in Europe and the United States. And so starting back almost a decade ago, about a decade ago, uh, Sandia, EPRI, and others were researching these different advanced inverter capabilities, working with uh, industry to add these functions and doing power systems testing with that. Uh, we've also done a number of simulations for all these different scenarios. And then uh, working with EPRI, uh, we've been starting adding, adding these different capabilities to uh, both international and national uh, standards. So one of the one of the first documents that came out was IEC uh, 61850-90-7, which uh, standardized the information models for advanced inverters. Uh, that has now been um, added to our national grid standards as an IEEE uh, 1547 revision. That's that's just coming out now. 
and uh, we're working with communication standards to add these, these different information models to DMP3, uh, the Smart Energy Profile, and also uh, SunSpec Modbus. And so I, I, while this has taken us in the United States uh, approximately a decade to do, I think we can leverage some of the work that's happened in the United States to accelerate the deployment of these capabilities in India. And so I, I, I think that um, you know, a timeline similar to this where we, over the next, I don't know, five years or so, we could, we could potentially take uh, the, lear the lessons learned in the United States and, and actually do some very quick power simulations, uh, working with the, uh, the SURFIN group, so the Smart Grid International Research Facility Network that I'm a part of, uh, to do lab demonstrations and field demonstrations. I think there's capabilities there. And then actually move, uh, move forward with um, the, the standardization process to add these requirements to the Indian uh, uh, interconnection uh, grid requirements. And so I'm, I'm not 100% sure on all the regulation intricacies here. And so I, I hope to work with uh, you all to, to come up with a possible solution forward. Um, and so I, I guess in quick summary, I'd like to just say that advanced inverters and converters are capable of providing grid, grid support uh, functions. They also provide grid visibility because you can query these devices and get information back. So if you'd like to know local uh, voltage or frequency information, you can, you can ask them for that. They actually respond much like AMI systems. So uh, potentially this could uh, complement some of the AMI deployments here. And, and there's a, a path forward based on what's happened in Europe and the United States for deploying these uh, capabilities through uh, tight management of the re regulatory process and adding these to the, the grid support uh, or to the, to the national or regional uh, uh, grid codes. So I think I'll end there.